Welcome, everybody, to our podcast called Insights into Israel. We're very happy to have our guest, Shimon Zimmer, back again today, and my co-host, Jeremiah. So, Hi, good evening from Israel. You. Good morning from the States. Hmm. It's good morning. Always glad to be here. Yes. I'm glad to yes. be here. So, Shimon, last, since the last time we talked, some significant things have happened most notably the ceasefire and hostage release. Can you walk us through that, those events from your position in Israel, what you're hearing, uh, what you may know that we are not hearing through the media? So take a few minutes and tell us how that went uh, well, and your thoughts about it. The first thing I want to uh, really to explain is to understand the Israeli mentality. The Israeli mentality is a little bit different. I don't want to sound a little bit, you know, like a peacock with my nose up. But really, in Israel, uh, I think we treating our people, soldiers, hostages, POWs, wounded people, killed people, we are treating a little bit in a different way. I just want to remind you that only uh, not too many years ago, about uh, 10 years ago, a little bit more, 11 years ago, we released 1,027 terrorists with blood on their hands, means they killed people, they murdered people, they stabbed people, uh, they threw grenades, they shot uh, into people. But we release them only to get back from, uh, uh, from captivity, to get back one single soldier. His name is Gilad Shalit. And this is the way we are treating. And now, when we try to describe what are the goals of this uh, current war, is first to bring our hostages from, uh, uh, from Gaza. What it means to bring back our hostages, you have to understand, on October 7th, October 7th, and I've mentioned, we were caught with snow pens, and the Hamas succeeded to penetrate and to conquer 22 uh, places in Israel, including military bases. That will be investigated in the future how it can be, but it happened. They penetrated and killed, murdered uh, uh, 1,400 uh, people, including uh, families, young girls. It was a big party in the area. Uh, they, uh, they were kidnapped, these people. Many of them were uh, uh, murdered. And we were really in shock. Actually, the shock continues until now. Uh, I want to show you only... Two examples out of dozens of examples. Two families, young families. Uh, I'm showing it to you uh, here. This is a family, um, uh, father, mother, and, and their uh, small children. This is uh, one family. And the second family is this family. Again, it's one of many families. Guys, many of that families were caught in bed, hugging together, shot in their heads, some of the families were burned together, burned together, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the Hamas just left them there. Uh, another family, which I want to show you, this is a very famous one. We call them the two uh, Gingy, you know, the two babies. You see the red hair. The red uh, and look the, the the mother the mother look. We don't know what happened to the father. The baby was kidnapped as he is nine months old. Now he's already ten months old. Uh, he, he was in uh, uh, he's in captivity, and we don't know what about them. The Hamas published that they were kidnapped by another organization, and we don't know anything about it now. Guys, you can ask each and every Israeli soldier 
and the soldiers are saying, we running in the battlefield because we want to bring them back. We want to bring them back. This is first thing, first thing in our priority to bring the people back to Israel. And I'm going back to what I've started and to say, this is the Israeli mentality. The Israeli mentality is to take care for the people because this is a small country. Each and every uh, citizen in Israel knows someone, uh, uh, family, friends, relatives. Uh, we served in the military together. Each one knows. And you know, you should have seen, you should have seen hostages were brought back and they were brought back directly to the hospital after they were checked and went back home after a few days. Guys, at the entrance to the village or the city, people stood two lines, like miles, with the Israeli flags uh, 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 welcoming their uh, back uh, at home. And now we still have there 136, 136 people. And just the last two days, I don't know if you heard, uh, the Americans saying, and Israel after them, saying the Hamas didn't want to release the women because they are afraid that it will be published what they did to them. Guys, it was a sexual crime. People were, uh, 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 you know, raped. Then they were taken off their clothes. They uh, were parading, walking. And then they were killed. And, and uh, just a, a short movie that was released, uh, really, just in, in the last few days, I, I really hope that you'll succeed. But this is a young girl. Her name is Amit. Amit. A-M-I-T. Amit is a, a beautiful Israeli family name and a personal name as well. She was kidnapped by seven Hamas terrorists. She didn't give up. The movie shows how she's struggling uh, with them. And in some, some point, they took off her, 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 her shirt. And some of them took, he, took her on his back, and she was taken to, uh, uh, to Gaza. She was released. She was released, and she gave the permission to release this, uh, uh, this video. So we are now a little bit in interior, interior struggling. That we, from one side, we say, guys, do everything you can, everything you can, release the hostages, give the Palestinians 600 terrorists back, bring back our hostages. From the other side, we want so much to finish the job and to cut the head of this octopus named Hamas. And these two issues, a little bit, a little bit, it's a collision between these two ideas. Shimon, we hear a lot in the media uh, about the hostage release, and we see images of people happy, kids happy, but now we're also hearing stories about how they were poorly treated uh, and really just lived in deplorable conditions. What are you hearing yeah. about these stories? Because it feels like the media is sharing both, both okay. of these sides. So first of Where all, is the truth here? We feeling a little bit, uh, I would have said even a little bit hurt. Why? Many places around the world, they try to compare the Palestinian children with the Israeli children. Uh, it's even... It comes to the Prime Minister of Ireland, Ireland, which one of the babies that she was kidnapped, nine years old, she has an Irish uh, passport, and he said she got lost. Oh, and she was found. Eloho, she was kidnapped by the Hamas. He didn't say that. He didn't want to say that. He said she got lost. This is what he said. This young girl came home and the father 
told about her. For an example, when he told her, uh, we are going to visit our aunt, she said, are we going through the tunnels underground? And until now, we're talking about nine days, she was released. She's whispering. She's not talking. Because this is what the Hamas told her in the tunnels, not to talk, to whisper. And she's still carrying it with her. And this is only one among many. Uh, uh, we now know that these hostages were drugged, drugged with some kind of drugs, which will make them, I would have called it, positive experience in what they had in, uh, uh, in Gaza. And they, of course, talking about not enough food, uh, no shower, uh, no water, no medicine. You know, we have the people 80, 85, 90 years old need medicine. They don't have it. So meanwhile, now Israel is a kind of an offensive into the southern part of Gaza with the big hump on our back with these hostages, which we want so much to release them, it's, it's a big problem. It's a big problem, and we carry it with us, hoping they will be released. So, Shimon, I know this week um, the leader uh, or a leader of Hamas went on um, – a lot of news shows. And one of the statements that he said is October 7th was just a warm up. Is there just, it's the rehearsal. What does that, how does that make you feel and your neighbors feel when you hear that these people are just treating this as a rehearsal? Yes. You know, ask every Arab, not only Palestinian, what is your goal? Their goal is very simple. They want to push us to the sea. They say it. It even was written, was written. It was taken out, but they're still saying it all the time. It was written in the Palestinian papers, book. And they want to push us to the sea all the time. And, and this is their goal, means to demolish the Jewish state, which, you know, it's... a uh, I'm always saying this is a very bad idea uh, to push us to the sea. You know, we the Jews, we are not such a good swimmers. And to push us to the sea, it's a bad idea. You know, even look in the history. We are not swimming. You know, like Moses didn't swim. He was put in a basket on the Nile. You know, this Moses departed the sea. We didn't swim. We walked, uh, you know, Joshua didn't cross the Jordan River. He departed the Jordan River and we crossed. Jonah didn't swim. He took a ride on a whale. Even uh, Jesus didn't swim. He walked on the water. So we are not good swimmers. We had one, Mark Spitz, you know, maybe the elders remember Mark Spitz with the seven the seven golden medals. I do. And they want to push us to the sea. 180 million Muslims, all they want to push us to the sea. They want to demolish Israel. This is their goal. And look how many times they did it. 1948, and 1956, and 1967, and 1969, and 1973, and 2006, and the first Lebanese, and the second Lebanese. Now the Hezbollah is in the north saying, we shall bring you to the Stone Age. So this is, look, this is our goal in life. Our goal in life is to stay alive and to fight and to continue uh, to uh, uh, this prosperity of this uh, beautiful land. Shimon, would you uh, spend a couple of minutes talking about Hezbollah? Because we see more activity to the northern front. And then we hear this message that something else is coming. Would you expect the something yes. else to be coming yes. from Hezbollah so and So first Lebanon? we have to understand that everything comes from the big head Iran. 
Iran funding the Hamas, Iran funding the Islamic Jihad, Iran funding the Muslims Brotherhood, uh, uh, Iran uh, funding uh, Syria, Iran finding Lebanon, Iran finding uh, uh, Hezbollah. And once in a while, you can hear a mysterious, mysterious bombing in Syria. Everybody knows we're trying to stop the waves of, of weapon coming from Iran to Syria or to the Hezbollah. Israel trying to stop it. Now, the Hezbollah, as if sitting only in the southern part of Lebanon, but basically they dominating Lebanon. They are the leaders of Lebanon. So we actually have a state named Lebanon, which is a, 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 a independent state, has its own leadership, military, police, and there is a gang, a gang named Hezbollah, which it's 10 times stronger than the Lebanese military. Someone in Lebanon will try to whisper against the Hezbollah in two seconds. He's dead. The Hezbollah succeeded in the last uh, uh, years to be armed, armed. Almost 150,000 missiles. Guys, the Hamas is a flappy white pussycat next to the Hezbollah. We know, I can tell you, if it will be with the Hezbollah, and tens of thousands of rockets and missiles will be launched from Hezbollah to Israel, we are talking here in Israel enormous number of casualties, which we've never, never uh, knew about it before. And we all know it will be big, it will be vicious, it will be bad. We will win. But the price will be huge. The price will be huge. So, Shimona, um, hearing about the, the earlier you talked about essentially framing up this, the uh, different approaches to being and life that Israel takes versus uh, Hamas and clearly Hezbollah take. And, and I read this story, which uh, I'd like to get your reaction of, about an Israeli doctor who operated on one of the leaders of Hamas and brain surgery, removed a tumor, so because they had to come to Israel to get that treatment, and now his nephew was taken hostage. I mean, what to me, that story just encapsulates the two postures. We will help you. We will save you. We will use our riches and our strength to take care of you, and you kidnap our children. So the person is, uh, 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 you know, is the leader, the leader of, uh, of uh, uh, Hamas. And uh, Ihya Sinwar is the leader of the Hamas. And yes, uh, and by the way, he was in the Israeli prison and he was released among the 1,027 terrorists. Hmm. He was released. And back then, he was a little bit, uh, a kind of an ex a exception of the others. You know, all the terrorists were released after they sign a document which they declaring we are not going to use any more terror against Israel. He didn't sign. He said, no, no I'm not signing that. And yet he was released. And he became the leader of the Hamas. But when he was in Israel, he was in hospital. Yes, he was a tumor in his, uh, his brain. Uh, Hania, Hania uh, is uh, the, uh, also one of the leaders of the Hamas. And his, his nephew, a young girl, she was uh, treated in Israeli hospital. They tried to keep it as a secret, but it was published. Mm. And she was taken out from there. So still, we, yeah, we're taking care of them. Until now, from Gaza, children being taken into, uh, uh, into Israeli hospitals uh, to, be taking, uh, uh, to be taken care of. But you see, again... This is Israel. You know, in Syria, it was a civil war, still a civil war. Yeah. You know that uh, until a few, like a couple, maybe a year or two years, we had in Israeli hospital in the north a special 
a, a department in the basement of the hospital which they treated 120 Syrians, Syrians which mm. wounded in the war were taken to Israel to be uh, treated. Uh, uh, the UN brought them to Israel. It's, it, it's a kind of, uh, everybody knows, but soldiers guarding the place, no one can go in, we don't know who are they. But many, many of uh, the Syrians have been taken care of in Israel. Some of them are, are Syrian soldiers, which the UN brought to Israel, and we're taking care uh, mm. of them. So, yeah, uh, it, it's a true story. Uh, Sanwar, you know, he was uh, uh, mm -hmm. operated in his uh, head mm -hmm. and the tumor was taken out. So what do people think? Do they think what what do your friends think? Does Israel should Israel continue this model of compassion in some of these moments or should all of that be shut off? What's the talk no, there? No, no, no. This is this is Israeli DNA. No, Israel will never stop that. Israel will never stop. You know, uh, we have uh, uh, by the way a big argument in Israel now is two things. One, we have Hamas terrorists, which October 7th murdered Israelis, wounded by Israeli soldiers, and were taken to Israeli hospitals to be treated there. Hmm. Operations, uh, uh, being hospitalized, hmm. you know. And uh, yes, were demonstrations. Again, next to one of the hospitals in Jerusalem, uh, young Israelis demonstrated, said, hello, these people killed, raped, murdered Israelis. Now they're in the Israeli hospital. Very good food, you know, uh, very good uh, uh, conditions. That, that's, that's how it goes. Uh, you know. So you said it's a part of Israeli DNA. Absolutely. Tell me about that. Why? I, how, I did it, how did you... I think it's more the Jewish DNA. Okay. Jewish DNA. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's there. Uh, uh, this is why, you know, so many, you know, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, movie show uh, Two and a Half Men. You know, Two and a okay, Half Men. Yeah, yeah I, I, I never watched Charlie it, but yeah. And, 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 yeah. And, and the brother took the other brother, they took him to the doctor and he asked him, do you know uh, the name of the doctor? He said, no, all I know is the Dr. Schwartz. So they, 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 they called him to the operator, and he, he said, uh, we need in New Jersey Dr. Schwartz. And she said, we have more than 500 Dr. Schwartz in New Jersey. So I need it only in this street. We have 228 Dr. Schwartz in this street. It's a kind of a Jewish compassion, you know, to... to uh, to be doctors, to be, yeah, yeah. I, by the way, we are very proud about that. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. I think this is what, yeah, that's what makes us a little and bit a, a, a kind of a exceptional from the entire, uh, especially around this crazy neighborhood uh, around. Look, the, the equation is very simple for the Hamas. As many local uh, uh, Gazians, uh, people from Gaza, will be killed for Ihya Sinwar, the leader of the Hamas, and the leadership of the Hamas, it's better. It's better. This is for them. The world will stand up and ask Israel, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. For them, as many people being killed, it's better. Shimon, talking about what the world is saying and the pressure you're receiving, even from the U.S. and definitely from the U.N., what do you think this next phase of the war will be like? And what do you talk about in terms of U.S. support or lack thereof? What is, what is the chatter among you? Talking about the U.S., we, we really astonished about how uh, the, uh, the leadership, the administration, Standing as we talking, we know that all the time American air cargo flying to Israel, uh, bringing ammunition, uh, equipment, uh, supply, everything. But we know there is a limitation. We know it will come the time mm -hmm. that Blinken, Anthony Blinken, will come and say, Dear Israelis, that's it. Uh, too many uh, people from Gaza were killed. Mm -hmm. We don't see anything in the future. And the worst thing, 
we don't know what you are going to do in Gaza after the war. Israel said, we don't want to rule there. Mm -hmm. We don't want the Palestinian authorities will rule there. Because the Palestinian authorities are are actually uh, encouraging terrorism. You know, today, (laughs) there is a story today, you know, each Palestinian that killed uh, Israelis, Jews, and he is in jail, he is getting, I think, about $5,000 a month. Today it was published that one of the terrorists in prison doesn't want to be released from prison because his family needs the money. So he wants to stay in prison. Not Why we are, are the Palestinians are paying to them. Like, what's that? The Palis- no, we? Oh, no, the we are not paying. No, pa- no, no. no. Yeah. The Palestinians, well, you know, the condition you have that. to kill a Jew, you getting the money. Iran paid that. Uh, Israel tried to, to take down, to reduce this money from the taxes that Israel paying to the Palestinian. It didn't work. And the Palestinians continue to pay that to their terrorists. But Shimon, back to the question of, you know, what's next in the exactly. war and the U.S. support. What do you think the tipping point? What is the tipping point that you can see or you hear about well, or talk about? You, you know, uh, again, we are astonished from the Americans, really. And, and... I, I can't actually put my finger on a point. It's, uh, I would have called it a chain of events. Yeah. Chain of events. Uh, if we should succeed to kill the leaders of the Hamas, that will bring it a little bit to, to the end. But again, if America will see that it continues and continues and continues and people in Gaza being killed and killed and killed, I think America will put the the uh, kind of obstacle and tell the Israelis, guys, until now we were with you. Now we uh, you have to stop. It can it, it can come, and uh, I don't know what we shall do. I really don't know what we shall do. Hmm. Yeah, I saw the, um, a quote by Jared Kushner because when uh, the previous administration he was nego- trying to negotiate just some more structural peace in the region and he talked about when he would meet with Israel's prime minister he would fly over on just your national airline um, and when he would meet with uh, the other leadership they'd fly like Hamas they fly over on their private jets and how were they getting the funding for the private jets? It was the aid. They were siphoning off the aid dollars to pay for their lavish lifestyles. And meanwhile, his here's Israel just coming over on their jet, just booking an airline ticket uh, to come and meet. And I, and I think that's another way that that's fascinating of this frame up of yes. And the reason why I bring that up is we have um, – it is hard for any human to see a bunch of humans suffering. And we are inundated with humans suffering in Gaza. I don't think anybody's doubting there's a lot of suffering going on right now in Gaza. Now, the how and why, I would say, give back the hostages and the suffering probably stops pretty quickly, right? But that's also, I think, why they don't want to give back the hostages or what's left of the hostages is because they want to broadcast out to the world the suffering that is coming at the hands of Israel. And again, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing to me. Everybody's like, ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. There was a ceasefire until October 7th. Um, how do you, wh- what do you feel internally? What does your wife feel internally? What do your kids feel internally when you know that you're being made out to be the, vic- the, the villain when you were the victims just trying to reestablish the peace that was there? So... We, uh, we said something very simple. On each 10 released hostages, you get a, a kind of a day of ceasefire. For them, every day of ceasefire is oxygen. They can organize, they can get oil, they can get gas, they can get water, they can get food. They had 10 days. After 10 days, 
maybe it was enough for them and they said not anymore we are not releasing anymore my personal view and I hope I'm being mistaken I hope God forbid and I hope I'm being mistaken I think they are not releasing anymore from two reasons one they don't want to let the young girl to go out all these young girls and to publish what really what happened to them and I think not all of them are, are alive mm -hmm. two hours ago mm -hmm. two hours ago it was a meeting between the prime minister and his staff with all the groups of the uh, families of the hostages including the hostages that were released and the Prime Minister said, I can't, I cannot promise to you that I'm going to bring everybody. Now think that you are a part mm -hmm. of these families and it's like, it's like, you know, it's like a, a kind of a, a lottery. Who among the 136 you can't bring back? It's my family. It's his daughter, it's his nephew, it's his grandson, it's his grandfather. Who? We don't know. And he said specifically, I'm not sure I will be able to bring everybody back from Gaza. First of all, I think it's, it's lots of, um, mm -hmm. uh, I would have said a lot of strength to say such a thing to a family of hostages. And we're trying to put ourselves uh, instead of them. And from one side you say, I want to kill all these Hamas leaders. But if it was my grandson in the Hamas end, I would have said, I don't want a war. I want my grandson back. Mm -hmm. Stop the war. Give them 100 days of ceasefire, not 10 days. So it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's a big, big, big issue here. And this is what really ripped us. You want to fight and to kill them. You want to stop it and to uh, release the hostages. But he was brave enough to say, I'm not sure I'm going to bring all the hostages uh, uh, back. That, that's, that's a big uh, uh, issue. Hmm. You think when you hear the hostages' stories, will they, will they be more forthcoming about their stories because I know they're in shock, but we need to hear those stories because we see a lot of stories about what's happening in Hamas and the humanitarian crisis and how people are displaced, yeah. and sick and, you and dying. Uh, but on the other side, what happened to the hostages is equally as important to tell that story. It just feels like it's you slow should have, You should have heard I know there's interviews why. with the families of the hostages that came back. And the common answer will be by them, we can't talk about it. We cannot talk, we are not allowed to, to talk about it because it can hurt the hostages there. And we know that horrible things. Look, what can be good with the hostages after 1,400 people were killed, babies were murdered, mm -hmm. chopped heads, pregnant women were stabbed, young girls were raped and then killed. Now they will come to Gaza as hostages and they will be in the Hilton, five stars? No. They will be underground, right. starved, no medicine, but yet the, 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 uh, mm -hmm. uh, the idea was told to the families, don't talk about it. Don't talk. And why do you, why do you think that is? What is the, you know, what's the because fear if of I them had sharing their stories? Someone from my family, let's say my daughter, 20 years old, she's in Gaza. And another hostage that was, was released, she will publish in the media, you know that, what the Hamas are doing every night, 
Uh, they raped her. She's naked. She doesn't have uh, food. They, 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 she's been torched. Uh, they, they, they beat her. What would I say? I, I will commit suicide. I, I can't handle that. So the order was, do not talk about it. Do not talk about We know horrible things happen there. But do not talk about it. Look, the time will come and everything will be published. Meanwhile, do not talk about it. This is mm -hmm. also, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a democracy. But people know in Israel what it means. Don't talk about it. Hold it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's, it's bizarre because on one hand, we feel like the Israel needs to have a uh, counterfactual out there to all the pro Hamas messaging going on. But, but I, I heard this thought the other day that I thought was really interesting. And, and it's the same thing that you were saying, like, how can anything good be happening there when we know we have GoPro footage, we know what they did inside of Israel. And there is a semantics thing that uh, it was actually um, Douglas Murray, somebody, he said, 40 babies were beheaded by Hamas. And then somebody came back to him and argued, well, it wasn't 40. And he's like, you're actually going to argue about the number? The number? If it's one, if it's one, the moral high ground has been lost. It's that simple. And I find that that's where, how do we reframe the conversations of ceasefire? Well, no, there was mm -hmm. a ceasefire. Oh, not that many babies were murdered. Okay, not that many. Okay, well, the hostages are treated well. Even say the hostages were. I'm with you, Shimon. I don't think they are. But even if they were, there's still 1,400 dead bodies inside of Israel. Like, so at no point is it like there's moral justification for any of this. Like, this is clearly stated by the Hamas leadership. This is a warm up. This our river to the sea. Or, uh, yeah, river to the sea. Um, the, it's very clear and implicit what has to happen. And I find it so bizarre that we're arguing of where the hostage, how badly were the hostages treated? It's like they're hostages. The problem is in the name. They're hostages. Like who takes hostages? Who take babies? Babies, old, old people, well, old women. Who is taking I'm, them? Jeremiah, to your point, I think it's we're looking for something to point to that shows exactly how bad Hamas is beyond the 1400 because they're throwing out numbers like 10,000 mm. people have died and all these people are displaced and it's a humanitarian crisis. So it's it's weird, but right. those are the messages you're hearing. How many people died the first day? How many people have died since they started the war in Gaza? How many prisoners are there? How many have been released? It just feels like they're winning the narrative because once the war started, the you know, casualties mm -hmm. were Two things huge. I wanted to share huge. with you. One, uh, in the last uh, few days, eight names of Israelis which were caught by the Hamas alive, alive, we got the message that now they, they're uh, uh, killed. And they were killed. They are in Gaza. We succeeded to get a few personal things of them. The families made a funeral. We don't even know what they have in the coffin. We don't know because the bodies are in Gaza. But the uh, Israeli or the Jewish rabbinical have decided to have a funeral for them. But they were alive when they were taken to Gaza. Now they, mm. they, uh, uh, they, they were killed. The second thing about numbers, you know, I'm not talking about those who until now denying the Holocaust. But <laughs> a couple of years ago, it was published in America. Someone said, no, I, 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 I checked. Not six million were perished. The number is four million. Hmm. Okay, so it's not six, it's four. So that's exactly what you've said. Not 40 Babies were, uh, yeah. you know, their, their head were chopped. No, it's only less. One, it's enough. Right. We have a sentence in Hebrew. One of the very 
famous uh, uh, authors in Israel. He said, Nikmat yeled katan lo bara hasatan. Nikmat yeled katan lo bara hasatan. Even the Satan didn't invent a revenge for a baby, a, a, a murdered baby. You know, when someone murdered a baby, even the Satan didn't succeed to, to, to come with uh, appropriate, if I may say, revenge. So, you know, when, when baby was put in a microwave, or it took about two weeks for the Israeli doctors mm. to fit a head to a baby body, no one can talk with us about proportional in Gaza. Yes, yeah. of course. And you mentioned that last time. I, I, I want to cover one more topic uh, on my end, which is the Mossad is going after these leaders around the world. And they actually publicly announced that, which is rare for them to announce a, like a, some sort of a plan to go after and murder leaders. Uh, do you think that's a wise idea? Is this a way to try to bring the war to a close? Do you think it's supported by the people and by other governments? Israel is not doing it, it too many times. 1972, 11 Israeli sportsmen were murdered in Munich, the Olympic game. Golda Meir, mm -hmm. prime minister back then, ordered the Mossad. Yeah. You will kill all the Palestinians that took part, participated in this mass massacre. And it, it took years, years, one by one, by one, by one, by one, until we finish that. That will be exactly in this time. That will, it will never happen that the Hamas leadership, about five people, will stay alive, will stay alive after uh, what happened now? It will take years, but but Israel will get them. It and and he said, he said, uh, it can be in Turkey, in Qatar, Europe doesn't matter. We shall get them, and we shall get them. Remember, nikmat hmm. yeled katan, lo bara satan. Remember that, guys. Hmm. Even the Satan didn't succeed to come with an idea how to, to have a baby murder re revenge. So they will be chased mm. until all of them will be dead. Mm. And we hope That's good a days will come. So Shimon, you're, uh, yes. you're about, you said Sunday, you're about to celebrate Hanukkah. Yes, right? from Sunday. From so, so yeah. what's it like to live with this beautiful holiday in the backdrop of this war okay. that your country's in the middle of? So in that holiday, uh, a few traditions. Uh, we are lighting uh, candles every day, another candle among the, the eight. Uh, we are having uh, what we are calling the sufganiya, uh, kind, of, uh, uh, kind of a cake. Uh, yeah, you know, like children singing, children getting their uh, uh, money, uh, you know, the money pocket. Uh, pocket money or money pocket? Pocket money. Pocket money. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> pocket money. But of course, while we should celebrate with our grandchildren, soldiers are running in the battlefield in Gaza. So, of course, it, it won't be the same. Uh, it's a very family holiday. It will be different this time. Shimon, I was with a group of people last night. Uh, I think all of them uh, are Jewish. And they were talking about starting to travel back to Israel. Like they have trips planned in February and March. And, and what is your feeling about resurrecting uh, tourism there? Like what do you think the timeline will be? We don't know. Look. Now they're talking about weeks until it will be ending with Gaza. Then we're starting with the north, which is going to be 
No one can go to Sea of Galilee. No one can go to Caesarea Philippi. No one can go to Mount of Beatitude. Because it's under rockets and missiles. And only when yeah. after, after everything will be finished, then we shall begin to organize the tools. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, we still have a, no. a tour, which wasn't canceled yet, right? Okay. So uh, Yes, that's in September. I, I think the thing is that everybody's really expressing their desire to support Israel, and they think one way to do it is to oh, go you know, back that's, as tourists. That's, my life. that's what they're thinking. Well, we'll Hope get so. you some more tours while we're at it. <laughs> okay, Jeremiah, do you no, have anything? No, I just would love to, I mean, any concluding Shimon, it's been a kind of a heavy time today. Ali even feels heavier than the last time we did this, which is mm -hmm. the subject matter is just not just dark, right? It's just encountering pure evil is hard. Yeah. Do you have perhaps a, a Hanukkah wish or a Hanukkah mm -hmm. prayer uh, for us to give us hope, give yourself hope? Yes, yes, two things. I want all the hostages back to Israel and I want all the soldiers to come safe back uh, to their families. Only today, 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 uh, seven soldiers uh, uh, were killed in the battle of uh, in Gaza, each one is heartbreaking. Each one is, you know, it's the whole family of Israel uh, 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 behind. When he, when, when they said he is from, let's say, from this and that village, everybody knows this village. Everybody knows people from this village. So it's all like a kind of a big family. So I really, really wish all the soldiers will come uh, back safe. And, of course, uh, the hostages uh, will come back to Israel. Sure, sure. That's, that's the only two. I'm very modest, by the way. This is what I'm asking. Thank you. Shimon, thank you so much. It's so important to get this information out, and we're... We're so happy to have these conversations with you, and we will pray Thank for you so much. the soldiers and Thank for you so the hostages much. and their family. Thank you so we're much, guys. We're thinking about you every day, and just know that we're sending you our yeah, love and, shall, and care. We shall and meet again, as always. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes, we will, and you it, hopefully, yes. You thank too. you. Thanks. All right. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.